One of the promises of electric vehicles is that they will be cheaper to own and operate than their gas counterparts. It's what I sold my wife on when we got our first Tesla just over four years ago. And it is essentially the idea behind this channel, how it all started when I was talking about saving money by owning a Tesla. It's something that I think we all love to hear. Well, today I'm here with a special story. After selling my Tesla Model 3, I have a final cost breakdown for you. Every everything I paid, every dollar that went into that vehicle and what the net result was. Let's go. When I bought my Model 3 in January of 2018, I paid just under $60,000 for it. This includes the base price of $35,000, the long range battery of $9,000, the premium package of $5,000, and at the time, enhanced autopilot of $5,000, plus the destination dock fee, which is about $1,000, giving me a total for the car alone of $55,000. Then you add the sales tax and other fees for the state of California, and you're just at $59,866 in total. In addition to the cost of the vehicle, I've had some repairs and maintenance I've had to do. My wife hit a pothole once and it blew out a tire, which cost us about $200 to get repaired. Prepared. Then afterwards, we found out that something punctured the radiator inside of the car, and that cost about $500 to fix. And I scraped the side of a curb once because I foolishly lowered my car, and this cost a $700 insurance claim. I also did some modifications to my Model 3, some of which cost money and others that were gifted from sponsors. In total, these cost me about $2,250 between the automatic trunk, the tow hitch, ceramic coating, and the custom wheels. So adding all that up, everything I paid basically for the car, the repairs, and any modifications was $63,536. And so when I went to sell it, I thought it would be a breeze. I thought everyone would just be dying for this car. And that's kind of because that's what the internet told me was gonna happen. Check out this article here saying that they hold their value better than the average car, or this one about the Model 3, how they lead the value retention, or how about this one from Clean Technica where they're actually gaining value on Credit Karma. So what happened when I went to sell it? Well, first I posted it on the Facebook Marketplace and crickets, basically no one responded, except for maybe some dealers that were trying to lowball me so they could resell it. So I pulled it off there and then I put it on a different website called Tread, T-R-E-D.com that a friend of mine had suggested. It was a cool service, but still crickets. So I lowered the price. Then I lowered the price again. And then I lowered the price again until I finally sold it. So overall, it took me about four months to sell my Model 3, which was a lot longer than I thought it would take. Granted, there was a pandemic that was kind of happening right when I listed it, but still, I thought it would have been something that a lot of people would have really been itching for, considering there weren't a lot of used ones out there, and Tesla was asking a really high premium for even these used cars that were similar to mine. And in the end, I sold it for $37,500 which gives me a depreciation of $17,500, which doesn't include the maintenance repairs or the customizations I did, just the actual purchase price of the vehicle. And this is actually better than I anticipated. Now, it still feels like a big loss considering I paid almost $60,000 or over $60,000 when you consider all the mods I did to it, but it actually turned out to be a lot better than it kind of seemed initially. Now, Tesla didn't really help with this because they kept lowering the price. They did it several times. They actually raised it back up a couple times, pissed off a bunch of people, but really it was just a, a confusing mess in terms of how Tesla is handling the pricing. Now you can get a similarly specced car compared to the one that I was selling for $47,000. So, you know, the 55,000 I paid for mine was a lot more than what you can get an actually even better car today for. So none of that really made sense. It definitely did not help when it came to reselling this car. So for depreciation, that was 17,500. And for insurance, I spent $3,242, which was across two years and eight months with an average of just over $100 per month. And for the tax credit situation back in 2018, I had some different things happen with my taxes that prevented me from getting the $7,500 tax credit. So that was a bummer. But what I ended up with was the $2,500 state rebate in California. So still not a bad deal. I already mentioned my repairs and maintenance, but the total there was $1,411. For taxes and fees, I paid $4,866. My financing was pretty cheap for the loan with just over 2% interest. I paid in total $1,178 in finance charges. 
And for fuel, this was actually a pretty difficult one to pull together because you have supercharging, some of it's free, some of it's not. You have destination charging, some of it's free, some of it's not. When I am home charging, which is what I do most of the time, the rate changes depending on time of day. I have kind of a rhythm of that, but overall it was really difficult to come up with. But here is my best guess for exactly how much I paid for charging. So as far as supercharging goes, I spent just over $214. This is because when I got my Model 3 in January of 2018, the free credits for supercharging didn't exist yet. They were still working on the Roadster program and Model 3 referrals didn't count until much later. So none of that really added up to anything and I had to pay for supercharging during that time. Now I have built up a bunch of credits through the referral program and I don't have to. But during that time, I spent $214 on supercharging, a lot of which was me traveling around doing experiments with the car. And so then at home, I'm averaging nine cents per kilowatt hour for when I charge and that super off peak time. And I get about 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Adding all that up, that's a whopping $458, which gives us a total of $672 in fuel across two years and eight months of driving with almost 23,000 miles driven. Now this is nuts. And it even shocked me when I was pulling together the data and running the calculations. I had to check it a few times, ask some friends to check it. But that is one of the huge benefits of owning an electric vehicle, especially a Tesla, is that you can fuel it essentially for really, really cheap. Here, let's look at a BMW 3 Series for comparison just to see what a kind of a regular gas car would cost. If I were driving a BMW 3 Series with an average miles per gallon of 31 for 22,700 miles in San Diego with an average gas price of $3.46 per gallon, I would have paid $2,533. Adding up the rest of the categories for the BMW 3 series, I get $37,282 for the true cost of ownership across three years. This is compared to what I actually paid for the Model 3 at $26,369. And you'll see that I saved almost $11,000 by going with a Tesla. Seriously, these cars are a really great value. And I haven't even mentioned things like autopilot, which is second to none, or other cool interior tech features, or even the fact that you're reducing emissions and helping fight climate change, all of which just adds up to be a really great value and a really appealing proposition, which makes sense why the Model 3 is selling like crazy here in the US and abroad. Now let's throw some other cars in here just for comparison. Uh, Mercedes-Benz C-Class comes in at $43,932. The Acura ILX is a pretty good deal at $28,762. And the Lexus IS clocks in with $41,376. And lastly, just for kind of comparison here, a Honda Accord across three years will run you about $24,509, according to Edmunds. So it's a bit cheaper than the Model 3, but far less awesome of a car and way worse specs. So when it comes down to it, the Model 3 is a great bang for your buck. And if you wanna see where it started off for me, check out this video over here of my delivery, which was just a great experience. And I've had such a wonderful time sharing this with you. I hope you guys really get a lot out of it. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And always don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here in the next one.